I grew up in a small town in Idaho, and I had graduated from high school, and I had actually accepted a scholarship to play football and baseball at the University of Oregon. In those days, they weren't given many scholarships for baseball, and I was going to have to play football uh, and baseball to get my college education. They wanted me to replace George Shaw, who was uh, the quarterback. He played for the Vikings a little bit in Minnesota and uh, the Baltimore Colts. We had a United States Senator in my ho hometown of uh, Payette, Idaho, and he used to go to the ballpark in, in Washington, and he became friends with Clark Griffith, who owned the, right. the Washington Ball Club, and um, he kept going out to the Griffith Stadium and, uh, Stadium and telling Mr. Griffith about this kid in Idaho he thought could help the Senators win some games. They weren't winning many games in those days. In fact, they uh, used to call him uh, first in war, first in peace, and last in the American League. <laughs> And uh, um, I think more than anything else, just to keep Senator Walker quiet, Mr. Griffith sent out Ossie Bluegee, who was a farm director at the old uh, Washington Club. I had not intended to sign a major league contract, but when Mr. Bluegee came out, uh, it, was a, uh, it was interesting because I was playing what they called semi-pro baseball. And I don't know why they called it semi-pro baseball, because uh, nobody got paid. It was uh, strictly an amateur league, but it was good baseball. And uh, the night that uh, he showed up in Payette, uh, it was a rainy day and, and uh, didn't look like we were going to play the ball game. And that night, the, the skies cleared and uh, the townspeople, uh, finding out there was a major league scout there, got the field in order. They burned gasoline on the field. I guess they wouldn't do that today. And, and, uh, Got in order, and I'd been going to that ballpark since I was a little kid, and ne had never seen anyone hit one over the left field fence. And uh, that night, I happened to hit one over the left field fence. And Mr. Bluegee went out the next morning, stepped it off, and he said it was 435 feet. And he thought that was a pretty good hit for a 17-year-old kid. So he called Mr. Griffith. He said, I think we should try to sign this kid. He had not, not intended to, to do anything, but just asked me to come work out with the, the Washington Club. And uh, so Mr. Griffith authorized him to, to leave a contract in Senator Welker's law office, and he went back to Washington. And at the time, uh, my father had passed away a couple of years prior to that. and. Uh, my brother was in Korea, uh, and uh, my mother and I were the only ones at home. And so uh, I had to make a decision there, w which way to go. Like Yogi Berra says, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> so I, I took the, the road that uh, I wanted to play baseball. those days, um, since there was only 16 teams in baseball, uh, it meant that guys were, if they did sign, were going to have to, to spend time in the minor leagues and uh, those that went to college would graduate and then have to go to the military for a couple of years and then if they did sign, they might be 28, 29 years old where they had an opportunity to, to go to the major leagues. Well, at the time, there was a, a bonus rule in baseball that said that if you sign anything over the minimum salary, which was laughable, which is laughable now, right. um, you were considered a bonus player, and you had to stay with the major league club for two years before they could send you to the minor leagues, and and uh, that's the contract that that uh, Mr. Bluegy left with uh, Senator Walker's law office was a bonus contract. <laughs> It was a three-year contract for uh, a total of 10000 a year for three years. The minimum salary was $6,000, and uh, the bonus was $4,000 a year, which is, uh, meant made me a bonus player and meant that I'd have to stay with the club for, for two years. But at 17, I could go directly to the major leagues. Great. That was so that was the good news with, with that deal, and that's what I did. Went directly to the Washington Center. High fly ball way back. He's going, going, and gone over the left field.
Harmon Killebrew, the killer from Washington Senators. Mickey Mantle, out in front of Harmon Killebrew, six home runs to three. See what I mean? You don't want to get, let him get too far out in front there. He's hard to catch. Tough competitor. Sure is. Let's see what Harmon Killebrew does here in the top half of the seventh inning. See how big his hands are? There she goes. Goodbye. Man, he didn't take long to whack that one. Well, he probably won't take long to whack another one either. <laughs> Killebrew up there determined. That one's gone. Wowee! Goodbye. Marvin Killebrew picks up a home run here in the top half of the seventh. She's going, going, and... Gone over the left field wall. High fly ball deep to left center field. This is going to be two in a row. It's way out there and gone. It's a nine to seven ball game now. He's come from way back. Here it is. High fly ball deep to left. It's going. It's going. It is. Gone in fair territory, a home run. Well, Mickey, you won three in a row, and it took a real top pro to beat you. And we'll look forward to seeing you back again very soon. Congratulations. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks, Mark. Good luck, Harmon. Thanks a lot, Mickey. Of course, Mickey was always a, um, a great ball player, but uh, we became friends later on. And, and uh, of course, we all miss Mickey. I wish he was around. Well, Harmon, I've got a check here for you for $2,000 to the winner belongs the spoils and our congratulations. And next week, you're going to meet a fellow with whom you tied for the 1959 home run hitting championship of the American League, a fellow by the name of Rocky Calavito. That's right, Mark, and maybe we can break that tie next week. Well, we'll see what happens. Good luck to you. Thank you.